We now come to session five, which is the final in this segment that I've entitled uh, Understanding How God Enjoys Our Rest, Takes Pleasure in Our Rest. To this point in time, we've seen by way of introduction that rest is a core value with God. We've seen as well that God takes pleasure in our image uh, when we bear His image, for we were made in His image. God takes pleasure when we trust Him and therefore are able to rest in Him. God takes pleasure when we not only enjoy rest or Sabbath for our sake, but for His sake as well. And just a few moments ago, we completed session four. God takes pleasure when we regain or gain His perspective on things, on life, as it pertains to us, as it pertains to God. Now this session is entitled, Rest, the Pleasure of His People. And briefly, the idea here is, just as God takes pleasure in rest, so we hopefully and eventually come to the place where we like resting with God. Not because we're lazy, not because we don't like to work or are afraid of work, but because we find this a, to, to be a precious time with God, pleasing Him, and we enjoy it. As I've said before, this kind of rest is a little piece of heaven on earth, and we long for it. Now, often when people in most cultures talk about pleasure, they talk about leisure. They have hobbies. And hobbies have a good, are a good thing. I, I have uh, my own hobbies and leisure and so forth. Um, and uh, we find uh, that this pleasure uh, of his people goes beyond leisure and so forth. You may or may not get the humor behind this, but I like to fish. Rest beyond leisure. Can you call back? I'm on the other line. You see he's fishing and he's on the line and uh, he has a fish on one line and he's got a person on the other line. And as I said, I like to fish and here's what we call a northern pike. Uh, I, I won't pronounce the name of, well, what is this? Is it a shuga? Is that close enough? Okay this kind of fish you have in your lakes and rivers as well. But leisure, as many good things about it, and leisure is very common with all the peoples of the world. I did a Google search, and I found that there are 241 million responses to this word. It may have changed today, but you can go and check and see how popular a word leisure is. There are many companies that use the word leisure to attract buyers. There are many products available because people like leisure, therefore you can make money off of those who have various leisure activities. And we all have some kind of a leisure activity, be it reading or bicycling. Uh, most people have something they enjoy to do with what they'd call their free time. And leisure has many good parts to us, to it but it is limited. I found a website some time ago, Men of Leisure Limited, and their mission statement reads as follows. Men of Leisure Limited is dedicated to the spread of leisure in all forms. It is our duty to educate all peoples about the transforming power of the leisure philosophy, to guide them in their quest for leisure, and in due time to declare each of them an official man of leisure. We shall provide quality products, sound advice, links to the leisure world, and leisure reviews to all men, no matter what their stature in life. Leisure has its place. Leisure activities can provide a healthy change of pace, a healthy change of pace from, obviously, our work. Uh, so we have something to do besides work. Those who just work become weary eventually. They need something to take their minds off their work. It could be that leisure helps you forget about your hardships. 
You may simply read a book that takes your mind away from your sorrows, your losses, your grieving process about one thing or loss or another. It breaks the obsession of constant thoughts, maybe worry. Leisure has a place. A bad habits, instead of being uh, hooked or connected and uh, constantly doing one bad habit, you find a better habit, a more healthy one, in some leisure activity. Perhaps it's a sport, a game. Perhaps it's being with people that enjoy the same kinds of things. Perhaps it's bird watching, part of God's creation. Leisure can break uh, the string of thoughts that are called worry, constant worry about what is going to happen in the future or, or about what just happened. So leisure has its place. Leisure activities can provide a good exercise such as biking or walking or canoeing or boating or any number of things can be exercise for the body that is good for the body, good for the mind, good for the health and the heart in particular. Uh, group activities. We can become friends because we like doing the same things. I have fishing and hunting friends or buddies and it is a joy to get in the car with them and go to some location and then fish together. Uh, someone else may have a different activity but it brings them close to people, to friends, good, shep good friendships uh, come about from leisure activities. Team building, sometimes uh, uh, corporations get their people together to work together through some leisure activity. It may be a ball game, a ball team. It may be watching television, certain shows and whatever else. So enjoyment, leisure activities have their place. But I want to say that they're limited. They're limited in the joy. And God means for us to enjoy things or life beyond our leisure activities. I might ask you to consider what best, what words best describe the contribution leisure uh, activates or activities make to my stress-filled life. What words would you use to describe those contributions leisure activities make to your life and maybe you have a stress-filled life. Perhaps you use your leisure activity uh, to escape at some point in time, to escape uh, from something that's a bad example, perhaps a diversion, to change thoughts, perhaps to relax. You'd use that word, or just plain pleasure. Uh, leisure activities can help us in many ways. What do my leisure activities fail to provide which I need in my stress-filled life. They do some things, but they don't do everything. They aren't enough. And you might simply start to be obsessed about your leisure activities so that you try to be a perfectionist and all over again then you're bothered by something you've made work. Once it was fun, now I've made it work because I have to perfect it. I have to, if it's painting, I have to do it perfectly. If it's knitting, it has to be perfect. If I'm playing ball, I have to do it very, very well, and uh, it's hard to do well. Well, you get the idea. This chapter is about more than leisure as we begin to look at the Bible once again. Uh, but fun, leisure activities, doing as you please, have in your own way, having your own way, these are all overrated in terms of their value to our lives. Some value, yes, but they're overrated. They're going to disappoint at some point in time. And Mark Buchanan, a man who's written a book, The Rest of God, talking about rest uh, as a means of being with God and being refurbished, refreshed, and also finding more of God through rest, he said one of the largest obstacles to true Sabbath keeping is leisure. Leisure is what Sabbath becomes when you no longer know how to sanctify time. Uh, Sabbath is sanctified time. We've talked about it as being a rest, being a chamber of holiness. But leisure activities uh, can be watered down Sabbaths. We're thinking we're having time with God, but we're simply doing an activity. While we continue being a benevolent project, your kind donations will continue to be vital in fulfilling the calling of TVS ministry. 
we do count on your gracious support and cooperation. For detailed information, please visit tbsseminary.com.